In the early 2000s, there was a running back who was terrorizing high school defenses, literally. He put the fear of God in your eyes and nobody wanted to play him. When high school teams saw they had to play him in their next game, they already chalked it up as an L and they knew it was going to be a long night. It wasn't like he was this big and monstrous back, he was only listed at 6 foot 1, 200 pounds, but with that being said, that 6 foot 1, 200 pounds was pure muscle. He was already a grown man at the high school level and you could easily tell he had NFL talent. You hate to label guys as a for sure NFL player, especially at the high school level, but he was about as close as it gets. There was no reason to believe he wouldn't make it to the NFL. Let me give you an example so I can put it in a better perspective. When he was playing high school football, if you had an option to bet on him making it to the NFL or bet against him, people would have thought you were delusional to bet against this guy. And if you don't want to take my word for it, I'll let his numbers do the talking. When he left high school football, he was the all-time rushing leader in the state of South Carolina and the all-time scoring leader. I'd say that's pretty good, but hold on, I'll do you one more. He was a five-star recruit and ranked as the ninth best overall recruit in the country. He wound up deciding to stay home and commit and sign with South Carolina, and at the beginning of his career, it couldn't have got too much better. He was phenomenal in his first two years at South Carolina, and one news article when he was only a freshman labeled him as their star player. But however, with all those great things being said, he messed up. And when I say he messed up, I mean big time. It was so bad matter in fact that his head coach at South Carolina kicked him off the team and he never played college football again. Getting kicked off of a team and never playing at the college level again, it means you had to do something very bad. And well, let's just say what he was doing and what he got caught doing, it was bad. Now that I think about it, at the running back position, he might be one of the biggest what ifs of all time. What if he didn't get caught? He's even went on to the record to say if he didn't get in trouble, he'd have been a star in the NFL. There's a lot of questions that people have about this man even till this day and it's almost been 20 years later. And you already know we're going to get to the bottom of it. This is the five star running back who ruined his career in the worst way possible. What's good y'all? Hope you're having a blessed day real quick. I know I say it, but a lot of you haven't. Let's see how many new subscribers we can gain. We're real close to 170,000. Can we gain possibly 50 more new subscribers? If you're new to the channel or simply not subscribed, I greatly appreciate it. if you go down there, hit that subscribe button. Let's see how many we can gain and however many we do gain, I'll tell you in the next video. As always, if you enjoy the content, you know what to do. Leave a like, do all that nice stuff. And now without further ado, let's get into it. Demetrius Summers. I'm going to go on the record to say about 95% of you watching this right now, you never heard of this dude. A main reason nobody knows his bizarre story is because it happened all the way back in 2003 up until 2005. I can almost guarantee you if what he would have done happened in 2020, everybody would have been talking about it. But since it happened back then, there wasn't social media, nobody knew what happened. So I figured, hey, why not? It's an interesting story and it intrigued me, so we're going to cover it. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. On, you already know behind every story there's a backstory and to get into this one we got to throw it all the way back to where things started demetrius played his high school football for lexington high school in south carolina where he dominated in total for his high school career listen to these numbers he rushed for 9076 yards and had 127 touchdowns back then he was widely regarded as a special talent and he backed it up at the next level coming out of high school he was a five-star recruit the number one running back and the ninth best overall player not too bad it goes without being said every school in the country wanted him but like we already stated he committed and signed with south carolina when this young man got to south carolina he couldn't have got off to a better start in his first season as a true freshman and i want you to keep this in the back of your mind this story is taking place back in the early 2000s 2003 Freshmen didn't come in right away and produce like we see nowadays. I mean, yeah, they might have played here and there, but it was rare. For example, now we expect five stars to come in and produce right away. Back then, that wasn't the case. As a freshman in that 2003 season, he had 124 carries for 638 yards, which came to an average of over five yards a carry. He also tallied on 12 catches for 146 yards. Overall, he had a great freshman year. You can't really ask a freshman to do much more than that, and he did more than exceed expectations. There wasn't any off the field problems that people knew of back then, so heading into 2004, things were looking bright. He only appeared in 9 games played, but in those games he had 88 rushing attempts for 487 yards, which increased his average to 5.5 a carry. He didn't have a crazy increase in numbers from 2003 to 2004, but he was getting slightly better and more comfortable. Those were only his first 2 years. 
he could have had the potential in his junior to senior year to go off for maybe 1,500 yards or maybe possibly 2,000. You want to know the craziest part about this? After that 2004 season, he never played college football again. Things are about to get really interesting, so pay attention or you're going to miss it. In the offseason, heading into his junior year, to be more specific, in early March of 2005, he got kicked off of the team. I know what you're sitting there thinking. Yo, Matt, what in the heck happened? What did he do that was so bad where he didn't get suspended for a couple games, but he got kicked off of the team? Overall, it was, and even to this day, is a very odd situation because they never came out and said why he got kicked off. It just so happened on one day that the new head coach, Steve Spurrier, who would become a legend, said that he's dismissed from the team for violating rules. Steve Spurrier would not comment on it or say anything else about it. The only thing he said that was on record in an interview is right here. Word for word, there are certain policies and rules that our student athletes must follow and unfortunately, Demetrius chose to violate those. That's where we are with this and we'll move on from here. Obviously, people back then and even me, if that happened today to one of any star player in college football, I want to know why he got kicked off. Steve Spurrier was constantly asked about it and here's the last thing he said about it. Quote unquote, we're not gonna have a problem guys. I hope I don't have to run anybody off, but sometimes that's helpful. Still right there going off of that quote, it doesn't tell us much of anything. However, we can put two and two together because Steve Spurrier had three rules. No fighting, no cheating, and no drugs. Those were his three main rules he's held throughout his entire coaching career, so it was either fighting, cheating, or drugs. I'm not too sure why, but it somehow flew under the radar and it was finally announced that he was kicked off of the team for testing positive for drugs. I'm going to emphasize this all throughout the video and say the word odd because it was odd. If it was announced he tested positive for drugs, why wouldn't Steve Spurrier just come out and say it? I don't know, and even when that report came out, people were saying that was false, it was something else. But then, what do you know, your boy Matt was doing a lot of digging and research. In 2008, after all this happened, Demetrius Summers came out in an interview and said this. I just tell them, and he's referring to people asking why he got kicked off of South Carolina, I made a mistake. Some people made bad mistakes and I made one. Marriage or you know what messed up my life pretty much. I feel like if I never started smoking, I'd be in the NFL right now, but I made a mistake and I had to live with it. Let me make this clear, that quote was said in 2008, he got kicked off in 2005. So if you were wondering why people didn't know why he got kicked off even though he said it, well yeah he said it, but it was three years later. We'll talk about this a little later in this video, but it was apparent, people didn't know, he had a serious drug problem. You also got to take into account if Steve Spurrier is kicking you off the team it had to be pretty bad. I understand some of my younger audience you may not remember Steve Spurrier and his antics but I'm gonna leave it at this. This man would do anything to win. It doesn't matter if it was a football game or eating a sandwich. Not only that, but he didn't just want to beat you. He wanted to destroy you. He was famous for running it up on teams at Florida. Maybe we should do a Steve Spurrier video. That's an entirely different topic for a different day. I just wanted you to understand that Spurrier, if anybody would give you a second chance, it'd be him. Since he got kicked off early into the offseason in 2005, that made him ineligible to even transfer or go anywhere else. He literally had nothing to do, and it was said in his spare time i couldn't confirm this but i did see it that he was working some odd jobs just to make some money here and there it was also stated i'm just going to put this in from the article that he was laying low and trying to give up drugs good for him as a human who am i to criticize a guy for making one, two, or even 10,000 mistakes. We're supposed to forgive people. In life, it's never about what happens to you. I firmly believe it's how you respond to what happens to you. You simply have two choices. You can either compound that bad mistake with more bad mistakes, or you can get upset and change your life and compound a bad mistake with good mis- or not good mistakes, but good life choices. You get what I'm trying to say. It was a difficult situation, no matter how you look at it. After not playing in 2005, he declared for the NFL draft in 2006 six but he went undrafted i don't understand why he declared for the nfl draft because he could have easily went to a juco school and possibly play d1 football again and increased his draft stock but i guess he just wasn't too patient and maybe he thought he was good enough and proved himself enough to get to the nfl and get selected here's my argument and i want you to understand this he was good enough to be a first second or third round pick but the fact he got in trouble and kicked off of the team that ruined his reputation you may not think it matters but trust me these nfl and nba gms and scouts they don't just look at what you can do on the field they look at how you perform off the field you know why they do that because when they are drafting you that's an investment they're about to pay you millions of dollars and if you're going to do drugs and have off the field problems they don't want to invest their money in you as an nfl team you want to get a good return 
return on your investment. So if you see a five-star recruit who's insanely gifted and talented, but you don't even know if he'll be able to play on Sundays, you're not really gonna wanna draft him. On the flip side, if you see a three or four star recruit who maybe is not that talented, but you know he's not gonna cause problems and he's gonna be available, you're gonna draft him instead. I said it in a video I made not too long ago. Your best ability is availability. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not just talking about sports, I'm talking about your everyday life. I'm talking about work life, I'm talking about relationships, and I'm talking about sports, every single thing. Showing up is half of it. If you can show up, you already got half of it done. I'm getting a little sidetracked, let's get back on topic. After going undrafted in 2006, the Dallas Cowboys did pick him up as an undrafted free agent. His brief stint with the Cowboys didn't last long because he failed to make the team. After that, he decided to play three years of Canadian football from 2008 up until 2000. He wound up only playing three years of Canadian football before he got released. Before we go any farther, all I gotta say about this is wow, this might be one of the biggest fall offs of all time. In 2003, he was a five star recruit, the number one running back in the country, and in 2010, he was getting released by Canadian football teams. I mean that in the most respectful way possible. And ever since 2010, nobody heard a single word from or about this guy up until 2015. In 2015, Demetrius Summers was arrested for drug and weapon charges. To be more specific, he was charged with drug trafficking, possession of a gun during commission of a violent crime, and possession of a stolen gun and unlawful conduct towards a child. Mm, 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 you hate to see it. You may be wondering how did they catch them, and I gotta give the cops whoever arrested him a lot of credit because this was an undercover operation. There was Lexington County policemen, but they were disguised as just random people and they were buying the drugs from Demetrius. And then after a month or so, that's when they arrested him or had a warrant and they went into his house. I couldn't even imagine or picture his face when those guys were showing up and he was like, hey, you here for your daily fix? And they were like, nah, you're being arrested. But hold on, it gets even better because in 2017, he got more charges and these were way worse. Okay, okay, let me clarify. The investigation was tied to 2015, but he didn't get arrested or sentenced to jail up until 2017. You know how it goes, the court system, it's about as slow as anything. In 2017, it was officially announced that Demetrius Summers, who was 33 years old, would be sentenced to eight years in prison. He wound up pleading guilty, so it's not even like he was trying to prove his innocence. The agents that were buying the illegal substances for him, it wasn't even Mary Jane like you're probably thinking. It was crack and cocaine. He also got fined $50,000, but that doesn't matter. It's more about the eight years in prison. That happened in 2017, so if you can do your math, he's still in there, and he should be getting out in I guess about two or three years. I always try to show mercy and have sympathy towards people but it's just hard to with this guy. Remember what I said, it's not what happens to you, it's how you respond, and he didn't respond in a good way. He's had drug problems dating back to 2005, and he's still having them till this current date. I hate to say this, but it's the honest truth. He's not a guy who's made one or two bad mistakes. He's just, that's his lifestyle. That's how he lives. He doesn't learn, and I'm gonna go on a limb here and say maybe he just doesn't care. He just seemed like trouble from the start. I'm wishing him the best of luck. I hope he recovers from this and becomes better person but from going off of his history why would I believe that would happen? I hope it happens, but I'm gonna say there's a 99% chance it won't happen. That right there too is the worst way for a career to go. You have all the talent, all the skill set in the world. You could have been in the NFL if you would have just stayed out of trouble. I personally just don't understand it. I really don't. This man could have been a multi-millionaire eating nachos in his $20 million mansion. He could have set up his family for life, but yet he just couldn't stay out of trouble. And it's not just him. We see this with a ton of athletes. That's why if an NBA or NFL player, they don't make it or they're labeled as a bust because of injuries, I have sympathy for them because it's not like they had off the field problems. They just couldn't stay healthy. But in this case and scenario, I don't feel bad for you. I'm going to wrap this video up here. I'm curious. Let me know your thoughts down below. But with that being said, it's going to wrap up this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something. If you're new to the channel, I would appreciate it. If you join our family, hit that subscribe button. And I'm out. Yeah, peace.